Now, this view isn't going to make uh, smokers happy as they still twitch after months of the long sales ban. But there is room for a significant increase in excise duties on tobacco products. I want to introduce you to Professor Corne van Valbeek from the University of Cape Town, who believes smokers seem able to absorb higher prices, but also because of the high cost of tobacco to society. He joins me now on a Tuesday lunchtime to explain the thinking and if he believes this view could find favor as far as the Treasury is concerned. Professor, good afternoon to you. Um, first off, how much revenue has the country lost due to this underground market? Yes, thank you very much, Jeremy, for being on your show. Uh, so the Treasury, under normal circumstances, would have expected to have collected about 14 billion rands worth of excise taxes during a normal year. So that equates to approximately 1.2 billion rand per month. Of course, the sales ban went on for about five months, so one can do the calculations. It's in the order of between five and six billion rand that was lost just during this uh, lockdown period. Now, explain your thinking when it comes to raising some taxes. How do you justify that? Yes, so uh, we did a study not so long ago in which we found that the cost of tobacco and the cost of smoking to South Africa is in the order of 42 billion rand per year. Uh, if, they, if you compare that to the 14 billion of revenue that we collect, of course, uh, the uh, math doesn't really make all that much sense. Also, what we saw during the lockdown is that people were often very much prepared to pay incredibly high prices for cigarettes, indicated that this is a very, very addictive product. At the same time, we know from research, both in South Africa and from other places, that people actually do respond to higher prices. We saw during the lockdown that some people quit smoking, and we know that for an average of 10% increase in the price of cigarettes in the long t term, we find that about 6% um, of people will smoke less, or rather uh, consumption will decrease by 6%. If we look at South Africa's tax incidence on cigarettes, it's in the order of about 50%. So 50% of the average price is uh, excise taxes. If we compare this to what the WHO, the World Health Organization, is saying, we see that we are well below the norms that have been set. The WHO suggests that the excise tax as a percentage of the retail price should be in the order of about 70% at least. We are at 50% uh, well below that benchmark. Also, what we see is that the government is in desperate need for money. And um, yes, it's true that the government has lost out a significant amount of revenue over the past five months, but increasing the excise tax on cigarettes is a way to try and uh, compensate for that loss that has been incurred. I can't help but think of this analogy and e-tolls here in Gauteng, and I'm wondering if raising the excise duties wouldn't be a bridge too far, that it would be the straw that breaks the camel's back, whether that might lead to some revolt among the smoking community who are already angry because of the uh, because of the ban. The smoking community is angry, and, and I understand that anger, and we did some surveys over the last while, uh, and... Um, we as a unit are not anti-smoker, but we are anti-smoking. Uh, and what we mean by that is we, most smokers actually want to quit smoking. Most have got regrets that they have started smoking. And there's evidence to show that uh, smokers sometimes need a trigger to want to quit. And despite all its many flaws, the initial lockdown did um, incentivize a number of people to quit. And we trust that they will remain quit during this uh, post-lockdown period or post-sales ban period. Um, at the same time, uh, excise taxes have been around for more than 100 years. Uh, and they have been increasing gradually over time. Uh, and we see that um, during this time period, if we can contain the illicit market, and that's an important issue, if we can contain the illicit market, and I think there's a lot of uh, pressure on the South African Revenue Services to do so, uh, it is a very, very um, effective way of uh, increasing excise uh, revenues and at the same time acting as an incentive for many people who want to quit to actually mm. quit. I wonder how much elasticity there is in terms of a raise. Would you hit smokers with one big amount or would you just increase it gradually as we've seen in the past? We, we've seen both of them internationally. So some countries 
go for the big bang approach and others go for a more incrementalist approach. So a country like uh, Australia, for the past eight years, on an annual basis, they increase the excise tax by 12.5% per year. Uh, so that adds up quite significantly over a number of different years. In the case of South Africa in the mid-1990s, we increased the excise tax uh, quite rapidly at the pace of about 25 to sometimes 50 percent per year over a relatively short period of time. Both of them seem to work. It's not a case that the one is uh, necessarily better than the other. Uh, the important thing is you want to uh, create a degree of certainty both amongst the tobacco industry that they can uh, take that into consideration. But more specifically, you want to get that uh, message out to smokers that smoking is an increasingly a more expensive habit and the best strategy would be to cut back and ideally to quit. What we also know is that high, uh, high taxes and high prices act as a strong disincentive for young people to start smoking. We've got lots of evidence for that. We know that uh, younger smokers are more price sensitive than what older smokers are because of the fact that they typically have less money than older people. All right, we're going to leave it there. Uh, Professor Corne van Walbeek from the University of Cape Town, thank you.